There we are. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. I am Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is a combined effort uh, of both churches, really, but it's for those who are spiritual but not religious, who aren't on, are still on that journey that are searching, and for those who haven't found that faith community that fits them just right yet. So I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, and check it out sometime. It's a great little podcast, and it shares stories of people who have experienced difficult times in their lives and tells their stories of overcoming them. I want to talk to you about a few things this morning. I want to talk about inner peace. That's the topic of the latest blog post. And the blog post is in the comments below if you're watching this on the Light Life and Love Ministries page. If you're watching it on a different page, it'll show up here momentarily. I also want to update you on a few things that I'm doing in my own spiritual life that are working well, and I want to commend them to you too. Maybe they will be useful for you. First, I got to take a quick moment though and talk about something amazing in our own little community. Our school district, it's a very tiny school district in the middle of Illinois, uh, they put together a chess team kind of at the last minute. There wasn't time to go and compete in local tournaments or anything, but they worked hard and it could take a few people to state with them in the sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So they took those kids to state. That state tournament was this past weekend. They did so well. These kids had not competed in a tournament at all. They had only played amongst themselves in the chess club, some had played chess before, but many had not, and they went to state, and they did so well. Of all the schools in all of Illinois, including the big schools in Chicago and the other places, uh, they all the schools were there together, just all thrown in together. And our school placed, uh, was it ninth in the sixth graders, the seventh graders placed 15th, and the eighth graders placed 23rd out of a total of 60 schools that were there. So couldn't be prouder and proud of my own kid and his accomplishments there as well. So wanted to commend the school district and the kids and the, the teacher, Mr. Martin, who put it all together. Well done. So I also want to talk a bit about some things that are really powerful for me right now on this Lenten journey. If you have not practiced Lent before, don't get bogged down in the details of what you have to do, what you should do or shouldn't do. Just take it as an opportunity between now and Easter to engage in something that helps with your spiritual formation. For me, I have been engrossed in the TV series, The Chosen. Now, I have to say, I really go out of my way to avoid movies and TV shows about Jesus because most of the time they show a divine person that I can't identify with, and it doesn't edify my faith more than what I've read in scripture. It's usually and often a, what I call a disembodied theology or disembodied piety. In other words, it's something that's uh, a really high aerial view of what Jesus did. Cool. I read that in scripture. Um, but The Chosen takes a different approach. This series looks at the people who were impacted by Jesus and his teachings and his life. They show what it was like to live in ancient Palestine, what that world was like, what it was like to be burdened under the heavy taxation of the Roman Empire, what day-to-day -day life was like, what the struggles were like. I can identify with these people in this show. Jesus is a main character for sure, but we gain entry point into Jesus and his teachings through the lives of these people, through their daily struggles, and how Jesus' teachings impact them. And I can't get enough. 
Uh, there are three seasons that are out so far. They plan to make a total of seven. So I highly recommend this to you. It's done really, really well. Uh, you can find it, um, it has its own app, whether you're on Apple or Android or what, whatever streaming service you use, look for the Chosen app. And it has all the episodes on it right there. It also has some extra interviews and behind the scenes info and that kind of thing. So anyway, that's one thing. I can't recommend it highly enough. It will lead you to an experience of Jesus in a way that you haven't before. Two, I got a devotional. And it's based on the chosen. And the devotional isn't trying to capitalize on the success of the show. The devotional would exist with or without the show. And it uses that same approach, that same approach of um, access to the teachings by these characters and their compelling stories, which the human struggle hasn't changed a lot. The details of what those struggles are change century to century but it all kind of boils down to people trying to live a good life and trying to find meaning and purpose and redemption so that's what i'm engaging in these days and it's really beneficial what's giving me peace right now is that structure i am not uh I struggle with structure sometimes and having a good routine to fulfill on the things I want to accomplish. Uh, devotion time is always there, but it's not always structured. And I've made a point in this Lenten series, in this Lenten time, to use that structure in my life. Now it's only been a few days, but it is worthwhile. It's been helpful to me. Uh, prioritizing those things with that structure has really helped me. Also, um, you know, I've had some experiences lately where I haven't been peaceful inside my own soul. And I don't want to move that way through this world. So I've taken time to just acknowledge that it's happening. And those feelings are really strong inside. They really take hold and they demand to have center stage so I don't want to let them have center stage what I've done is just admitted that I've looked at that within myself and thought these are people I love and care about I don't want to be like this with them right now that has made a huge difference and then just breathing and leaning into that has been a real help. And it takes a minute sometimes to calm those voices. Uh, when it's nice outside today, it's really windy and rainy here. When it's nice outside, uh, taking a moment to just go out and breathe some fresh air, let the sun shine on my face, or touching a tree, touching something natural in this world helps to bring a better energy to me. So I recommend those things for you if you're having similar struggles in your life. Also, uh, check out the Spirit Health blog. I have on there today eight tips of gaining and keeping inner peace. And that's a great read. It's a quick read. Uh, I don't write really long blog posts. I have just some bullet points that you can quickly get through. Uh, the first is mindfulness, and that goes along with what I mentioned a while ago, just being present in the moment and being aware of, is this the person I want to be right now? If it is, fantastic. If it's not, okay, I need. I want to change it. So mindfulness, uh, connect with nature, that's a big one for me. Practicing gratitude always, always, always is such a good idea. Gratitude just refocuses us. It changes our focus from what we don't have or what's lacking or what's missing and 
moves our focus to what is present and what is good in front of us. Of course, engaging in spiritual practices, and there are so many of these. We might think that spiritual practices mean praying and reading the Bible. Those are two tried and true, good old solid practices, but they're not the only two. There are a lot of ways that we can engage our spirits. And if you want some more info on that, um, reach out to me. I can send you a link that walks you through a process to help you recognize what will work for you. Uh, practice self-care. Is there something going on in your life right now that you need to take care of within yourself? If so, prioritize that and take care of that. And face your emotions head on. This is a big one for me. I, throughout my life, have had a time of sweeping them under the rug, of annoying, of, of um, ignoring them or just shoving them down, pushing them aside for something more important at the moment. A lot of times that's what I should make a priority. So face your emotions head on. Why are you feeling it? Is that what you want to feel? And is that what you want driving the ship right now? And remind yourself that your inner peace may be more valuable to you than achievement. So that's something to consider. What is a priority for you right now? And if it's peace, then prioritize that. Prioritize what it is that is most significant to you in the moment. And by prioritize that, I mean, do you might say, this is significant to me. Well, prioritize it by ensuring that your actions are aligned with that statement. And here's a random one. Uh, take time to declutter. Sometimes the clutter around us will bring about some a little chronic anxiety that can ratchet things up a bit. And clutter can be the stuff that we have sitting around. Clutter can also be uh, thoughts that we keep pushing aside. Uh, things we need to do some thinking on or decisions we need to make. Uh, conversations we need to have. Clutter can come in a lot of ways. So take time to declutter. I hope this has been helpful to you. And if you have any questions or concerns, reach out to me. I would love to support you any way that I can. And I pray this week that you find those things and those practices that bring you peace. Be well, friends. Bye for now.